Welcome to another episode of the Quick Corners of Corner. This episode is part of the World Book and Copyright Day celebration, season two. Today, I'll have the pleasure of hosting an author who's been here before. You'll see his bio right after this. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the Quick Corners Book Corner, John. Thank you so much. And uh, it's such a joy and honor for me to be with you again. And I want to take this time to wish you and your family and your community a very blessed and a favorful 2022 as well. Thank you. Truly appreciate that. So we're here to talk about uh, my latest book that came out uh, called Unveil Your Purpose. Uh, I think we've talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about things which I've not spoken about in my previous video. So there's definitely something different. Uh, this book, by the grace of God, became a number one new release on Amazon in India uh, in 2020. So uh, this old book is about a time when people are looking for their meaning in life or the purpose in life. And I believe that the only way you can live the life that you've been created for to see the uh, fullness of your potential being unleashed is when you walk in the purpose that God has created you. So this book is a one-stop hub where I talk about how to find your purpose on a step-by-step -step level, how to channelize your purpose, how to walk in your purpose, how to have a purpose-driven mindset, a purpose-driven lifestyle, Style and uh, you know the fundamentals about walking in your purpose and also as someone who has gone through a lot in my journey I share a lot of encouragement because what comes naturally to me as my gift is to inspire and encourage people so I use this as a great tool where you can have like one st step where you can learn everything about living the life that God has created you for so that's just about my book. Nice thank you and I'm glad that we're talking about this awesome book again, because some people may not have watched the previous video, but I'll add a link to that video in this video. So people have an opportunity to also get that part and just get mm -hmm. more from your book. So like I said, some people may not have watched that first video. So why mm -hmm. don't you tell us again, why did you even write this book? I love bringing props into the picture and I'm the guy who brings stories out of random things. That's my gift. And so last time I brought a newspaper and this time I brought an aeroplane model. And um, I'm an aerospace engineer, by the way. So I love aeroplanes. So I just love them so much. So here's an aeroplane model. Now this aeroplane looks so cute. It's so awesome. And if you've been on a flight, you just look at it. If I just sit and admire it and you can admire it as well. But the thing is this, how much ever nice it is, okay? Uh, an aeroplane can be its best, not on the ground, but only when it is on the skies, right? Uh, so a lot of people today are just trying to make some sense out of their life, right? Wherever they are and wherever they're planted, and they're just hoping to see, you know, why am I not able to unleash the fullness of my potential or why am I not having the satisfaction of my life? Why am I always having this constant struggle throughout my life? Uh, that's the, the reason is because you see an aeroplane is not meant to be on the ground. It's meant to be in the skies. You if you take, for example, I know you may recognize this train, Thomas the Tank Engine. This engine, uh, you know, if you were to put it outside of a track, is of no use. It can only be in a museum. But if you keep it on a track, it can go. The same way an aircraft can be its best only on the sky. Yes. So likewise, every one of us have a specific purpose and a specific place or market in this world, only where we can shine and be the best version of ourselves. And through that process, we are able to enhance God's kingdom, right? Unfortunately, people today are just living a life like okay you know what all I want is let me get settled in life let me just make money let me just you know see my dreams come to pass just it's all about themselves they're living this as for me and my household lifestyle mm. but I want to break out of that to a place where they say you know what I'm not here to live for me I'm not here to enhance my name or to build my empire I'm here to build God's kingdom and how can I build God's kingdom is only when I'm the best version of myself and where will I be the best version of myself just like an aircraft will be it's 
best on the sky and then a train will be its best on a track. You'll be in the best where God has created you to be. So that is what inspired me to write this book, to encourage people to go after the God-given purpose and only there they will be able to shine and be the best version of themselves. So that's the gist about the reason why I wrote this book. Thank you. And, you know, you make a really good point because there are some people who are, let me use your props as an example. There are some people mm. who are created to be a train, but they spend their time envying the airplane. Yes. What do you say to such people? So what I would say is you have to understand that, like everybody says, you know what, when will I be like Joseph reaching the palace? Um, but what if God had created you to be a cup bearer, right? When will I be like David reaching the throne? But what if God created you to be, you know, probably uh, Jonathan, right? Who was so instrumental and encouraging. So what I believe is that not everybody is created to be in the same level as such, uh, like an aircraft. Now, uh, to just show you this, I also brought a helicopter here, right? Now, if you see, um, uh, a, a helicopter can go up straight, up, but an aircraft will never go straight up. It will always go slow and then it uh, takes off on the runway and there's a difference here the reason being if you go straight up what happens is that uh, you know it can only go to a certain height but when an air aircraft goes up like this it can reach heights that an helicopter can never reach so what i want to tell people is that you know what you have to understand who god created you to be mm -hmm. right if god has created you to be a helicopter Yes. Um, uh, you know, an helicopter is the one that can, uh, you know, rescue people on a short end places and uh, places that an, uh, an aircraft can never go. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful that you don't compare yourself to people who are not in your wavelength. Now, the best classic example I can give you for this is none other than the Titanic. Okay, I'll just give you this. Uh, I'll allow this topic of Titanic and I studied a lot about it. One of the biggest mistakes that the Titanic made was there were many ships during that time, some of which were known for carrying the passengers at a very high speed. They could go at like 48 knots, 51 knots, but they were known for the speed. Likewise, yeah. some ships were known for a cargo, some were known for carrying steerage, those people in the third class. And Titanic's speciality was that it would um, be the most luxurious ship on uh, the planet at that time. So the thing is the Titanic was already making headlines to be the uh, ship that was, uh, you know, the most luxurious, they called it the unsinkable ship. And it had the state of the art uh, technical uh, things, which the other ships did not have. But you know what the problem was? They were comparing themselves with other ships, which were going faster. Even in the movie, you will see the owner of the ship, Bruce Ismay, coaxes the uh, captain of the ship and says, I want you to speed up faster, and compare yes. yourself to other people so that you yes. can go faster and surprise people. And that is what was so instrumental in the ship, you know, pushing against its uh, best potential. See, imagine yeah. you're just starting the ship on its maiden attempt and you're pushing it too hard. The, the ship limits. was going at over 21 knots, just uh, half a knot. Uh, you know, in comparison to its maximum speed, to the fact that when uh, when the ship saw the iceberg, it would require one kilometer for the ship to stop, Respond. which was not possible. And that's why it hit the iceberg. See, the whole problem was because they were trying to compare themselves with somebody else who was known for going fast. Now, that's why you should understand that, you know what, somebody else is gifted in going fast, you're gifted in being the luxurious ship. So don't compare your gift with somebody else and yeah. you will also land yourself in trouble and you'll put everybody else in trouble. So that's mm -hmm. just about the lesson you can learn from the yeah. Titanic. Oh, wow. I'm glad I asked you that question. And, yeah. you know, the, the, the comparison of the plane and the helicopter, see, that's why it's good to have an aerospace engineer with me because I was like, I wouldn't have known that by myself. Wow. Wow. I didn't we even know that dimension of the Titanic. <laughs> hmm. the, that's the one. The Titanic was known for something, but they were trying to make themselves known for something they were not. Oh. Best. So that's why I uh, give this uh, 
you know headlines to everybody you know slow and steady makes better headlines you know if they had gone slow and steady they would have made better headlines that's because true. they fast they that's got true. into the wrong headlines so always yeah. be careful about that in comparison yeah. to this I, I like that headline I, a lot of times i try to remind people that speed kills <laughs> yes <laughs> and that could also happen with our purpose yeah yes hmm. that's that's so true <laughs> okay so now i want you to read another portion of your book to us please oh obviously sure i'll do that and uh, this time i thought of um, reading again it's going to have an element of um you know aerospace engineering part <laughs> okay <laughs> so i'll just read this part so coming from the aerospace domain there's one aspect of this field that caught my attention whether it's an aircraft engine or airframe the first thing that the manufacturing company does is analyze the market research and come up with a new specification by testing the models then they showcase the same in the market and infer the response from potential buyers only if they get a minimum threshold number of orders they will go to manufacturing phase of the product so when the product finally comes out it's not sitting in a warehouse waiting for someone to buy it mm -hmm. but rather when the product is ready it already has a market which is waiting for its arrival mm -hmm. they don't manufacture the product and then look for a place for it in the market but rather they study the need and requirements in the market and then design and manufacture the product accordingly so if they put so much of thought before manufacturing a single product how much more thought do you think god would have put before he created you he's mm -hmm. not wondering what to do with your life he has already seen the need in the market that is the world and then he created you to be the answer you will become when yeah. you walk in your purpose so yeah. i want you to understand that god did not create you to see if there can be a place for you in the market he created you because there is already a requirement for you in the market <laughs> this is um an eye opening revelation to the lord yes. because, because a lot of people are operating from the place of lack like oh my goodness is there a purpose for me why am i here no if there's no purpose for you god would have never created you so if you are alive you have strength in your body i want you to understand that god has a purpose for you and sure 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 he does he does ooh <laughs> So I know your book, you know, mm -hmm. hits number one bestselling in India, but where else can we get copies of your book? It's available all over the world through Amazon, my website, and so many other ways people can get it. Apart from my book, I'm also a top ranking uh, podcaster. So uh, I have more people listening to me from countries like the United States than from India. <laughs> oh, nice. So uh, nice. by the grace of God, like, actually those from the united states from my majority of my listeners so uh, a lot of people get it from their amazon.com so i put the amazon.com link also available on my website as well as uh, you know like everybody you want to find it it's available okay thank you we'll add that information below and we have already shared with people your bio so they know how to connect and listen to your podcasts thank you thank you so much ada <laughs> Thank you so much for your time with us John. I'm I truly salute and appreciate you for all the work you're doing in fulfilling your own purpose. Thank you so much and thank you so much for you the work that you do. I'm so appreciative of the work that you do. I know it's amazing that you give platform for other people, right? Like that is my heart as well. Like as a person who's having the podcast and my radio show, I would love to give platform for other people. And amazing to see people like you who are doing the same thing. And I really want to say God bless you for that, and I appreciate and acknowledge that. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words. Thank you, John. Yes. Thank you. Before I let you go. I want you to promise on air that you'll be back in the Quip Corners book corner again. Obviously, sure, I will do. It, <laughs> it was wonderful. I mean, uh, honestly, I thought this was a one-time thing when I came in last time, 
and when you invited me again i was like you know i remember this joke i don't know if you're going to edit this out or not but i'll just share this somebody said you know if someone invites you for a second time it can mean two things you did really well last time so they want to have you again or you did bad last time so they want to give you a second chance <laughs> so <laughs> when you just told me that you want to have me for the third time it means you know you were happy <laughs> you've done very well you've done very well and definitely I'd love to have you, not just in the book corner, but maybe even in the quip and convo segments. But we can discuss that offline. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank That's you so awesome. much again. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. How was that for you? I truly, truly, truly enjoyed chatting with John. I like how he brought in his props, which he usually does, but he does such a great job with that. And yes, John, you were invited a second time because you did a great job the first time. And I'm looking forward to the next time you'll be in the Quip Corners Book Corner. Thank you all for watching. And I look forward to reading your comments. Let's keep this celebration going. See you in the next episode. Bye now. <laughs>